Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. Today we're going to look at a reverse polarity protection function or feature using a simple diode method. We start with a voltage source that goes from uh, that has an amplitude of 10 volts, no DC offset, and 100 hertz. And we're using essentially a resistor divider, but we're going to be calling the last resistor RL to indicate that it's the load resistor or seen as the load for our circuit. So uh, first reference designator is R1, second reference designator is um, RL. Uh, the, re the resistor divider or voltage divider combination is going to create uh, a division of one half or a multiplication of one half, a division by two. So the constraint on this now is that we're going to uh, make it so that the output has to be greater than zero if we're going to Im import or input this particular sine wave into there. And that's going to create a problem. So if we run into the analysis and we go into transient as it is, we're going to see the input and output graphs. It goes from zero to 10 and then down to minus 10. And the output is a resistor division of this, but it still goes to down to minus five. So it goes from positive five to minus five. So our constraint is that V out must be greater than zero. So if this were going into a digital input of some kind, that circuit would now be suspect for uh, some kind of problem. Um, so we're going to try and uh, we're going to do what's called reverse polarity protection. So we're protecting this circuit against a reverse polarity or a, re or a reverse battery condition. Sometimes it's called that. So we put in a diode. We can choose a generic. Um, but today we're going to use an actual model. And uh, the, the parameter that we're going to pay attention to is the BV value. So all diodes have breakdown voltages. Zeners are just special diodes because they are designed with the breakdown uh, voltage in mind. Um, so they're actually exploiting that feature or that particular effect um, to create some type of overvoltage protection. But we're not doing overvoltage over protection. Today we're doing reverse polarity protection. So we're going to choose a reverse breakdown of 70, which is sufficient for what we're doing. And we put this diode parallel to the direction of where the positive current would be. So we're expecting that only currents that are going to be going in a clockwise fashion are going to be allowed in our circuit. If there presents a reverse polarity condition where the plus is now down here and it's minus up here, then the current would be going in this direction conventionally. And the diode is supposed to be blocking in that direction. So let's see what happens. So there we go. Um, using a realistic diode kind of makes sense. The output, all of the positive values are going to be forwarded into the circuit, and then all of the negative values are going to be cut down. Um, there's going to be some evidence of artifact uh, down here at the bottom portion of the graph uh, where you may see some, may see some problems, but uh, if it's with intolerance, then you're okay. Let's run that one more time. There's a, one more feature about this is that there may be some additional delay added into the signal um, in order for uh, in order for the diode to be on at the beginning. So there's going to be some delay associated with that. Uh, during startup, depending on what you're trying to do with the circuit, that delay may be significant. Uh, so if timing is of concern in your application or in your product, make sure that you're accounting for all of those timing delays so that it doesn't cause any issues. Um, or create what's what are called race hazards. So when something doesn't get to where it needs to be and you're already trying to start a process before that point, it can create some issues. Um, in a sense, essentially the analogy would be like trying to deliver a package, uh, but you don't have uh, the package, but yet you've already sent the mailman out. Um, some kinds of situations can get like that in electronics, especially if you're dealing with microcontrollers and when they're starting up and what kind of processes they're running. So that's, uh, that's one way to do this. Now, uh, the other portion of the breakdown voltage, if this were lower, let's say this, I put this at 9 volts, well, on this, this particular voltage source is going to go up to 10. So at some point, this is going to break down and it's going to create some nonlinear effects. So we're going to do that real quick. So you can start to see that now this diode is having to break over and it's mimicking the lowest portion of this negative graph. It's starting to, to break down. So you're going to see that um, uh, that contour or that uh, curvature start to play out in your circuit. So just be mindful that if you're going to use this diode method, that you choose things that have a higher, uh, higher breakdown voltage associated with them so that they'll have a much more stronger reverse polarity fighting um, uh, potential. Now, 
there are other ways to do this, and this particular usage of diode, uh, diode reverse polarity protection is not good for power applications, because if you are going to be, if your major application, let's say a motor, is going to be drawing 10 amps, well, this diode has to be rated for um, for more than 10 amps in that case. So if this were like a SOT23 package, obviously you're not going to be putting 10 amps through that. So this would have to be a massive diode in order for that to make sense. Plus, there is a voltage drop across this diode, usually around 0.7. So you would not you would be losing the opportunity uh, to use maximum power across the motor or across the load. Um, so keeping that in mind. Typically this is 0.7, but you can choose certain diodes that will be more efficient at uh, or have much less voltage drop, so they might be 0.3 or 0.4 or something like that, and those are those are generally in the category of Schottky diodes. They have a little S at the end of the triangle to indicate that. So that's uh, that's one way that you can do your diodes. Generally speaking, reverse polarity protection like this works for only signals and uh, for control signals that come into your circuit. Uh, for for you to be able to do that, because sometimes customers will will put the opposite. Um, opposite voltage into your into your system and that will create some issues. Um, additionally, there's more conditioning elements that you may add to the signal. So you may wish to um, buffer it a little bit more by adding a capacitor that'll create some sort of filtration effect. Uh, or you may want a Zener diode in there uh, so that if the customer or who's ever going to be using this circuit um, has an over voltage condition you're going to be prepared for it because this will prevent reverse polarity protection but it won't prevent over voltage protection so you can have reverse polarity protection rc filtration and you can have uh, zenering or over voltage protection so the main thing is to, to anticipate what the worst a person could p potentially do on this pin and to prepare for that and sometimes you'll see specifications from ford chrysler about what the input requirements are in this in this particular example, the only constraint that we have is Vout must be greater than zero, and so that's one way to do that. Um, next time we're going to explore another reverse polarity protection method using a P-channel um, uh, MOSFET, uh, and then another example using an N-channel MOSFET in the low side of the circuit. So thanks for uh, spending time looking at this today. Um, if you can, please give a like or subscribe. Um, that helps me uh, keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, if you have some comments or, or circuits that you'd like me to do, please let me know also. I'd be glad to help you. All right, thanks.